in, uh, in, in our cities. It's, it, there are different skills. Uh, events in management. Uh, I think those are things that we have to upskill. And you, you don't train. I, I also emphasize that when you are, are, and, uh, security forces are trained for missions, especially the especially military. So when you when you find find yourself in a situation where you have problems, you are addressing them. You are also training people. It takes it takes a lot of, a lot of time because the same people that you deploy to uh, solve those problems are the same people that you withdraw also to train. So it takes some time for you to address all these things. Technology, you, uh, you started with technology initially. Today, we're not a manufacturing, so unfortunately we're not a manufacturing nation. Uh, everything you're going to have, you're going to acquire from abroad. It takes some time for you to even uh, put a plan in place, um, get those equipment, they, that, not, not that off the shelf. You actually have to manufacture them to your specifications. And it also takes uh, resources. If in Abuja or Lagos today, at all city entrances, you had uh, bomb scanners, explosive scanners, um, you had balloons flying over like command centers, you had cameras, you can actually close the cities. Any, any, anybody, any, any vehicle that's coming in is, um, I mean, is recorded. Uh, if there's explosive particles discovered anywhere, those vehicles can be followed to their destinations. Uh, investigations would be uh, relatively easier. So, but the way we are, it would take some time for us to uh, put all the structures in place so that you can reduce it, reduce the incidents. Evil is evil. Um, it's like crime. No matter the efficiency of police forces, crime will still occur. Okay. Uh, no. um, can, can we say, sorry, Chamberlain, mm. can we say now, I mean, you mentioned the Niger Delta mm. and our level of, uh, of some measure of success there, mm. and that is majorly attributable to the fact that we kind of understand what the problem in the Niger Delta is. Can we say we understand the spate of bombings that have you know, besieged us in recent times? Are you, are you sure that you understand uh, the kind of problems we have in the Niger Delta? Well, at least you have to understand some problems before you can proffer some solutions. Otherwise, you will just be misfiring, right? Hi. But I will believe that for the federal government to have intervened in the Niger Delta, they had some measure of understanding of what was going on there. In terms of what exactly we're facing currently, do we have an understanding there? Let me... Let me ask. Let me tell you why I asked that question. You know, it, it took some years, quite a number of years, for us to come to terms with the problems in Niger Delta. Uh, it started in the mili during, during the military era, uh, agitations, um, riots, cancer who was killed. I mean, look at what it took us. Uh, <clears throat> before, I think in, I can't remember which year precisely when the military. Now decided that when the government now decided that you could put military in that place to uh, solve the problem, and even at that time, as, as far as I'm concerned, and I've said it before, it wasn't because there was a military problem. There were political and economic problems, but you needed the military to stabilize the situation, and the military has been there for years. Um, it was much later because in Niger Delta you could identify the militants, but in any case. You had political uh, officials who all, one way or the other, tried to solve the problems. And I will take the, take the uh, issue of the governors. There's no governor in the Niger Delta at that time who did not try to address the, address, address the issues. You could fault the manner in which they tried to address the issues, but everybody tried to intervene. Um, even leaders at different levels tried to intervene. I will take myself for a, uh, as an example. One of our chief of I actually uh, took it upon myself to approach the key leaders, went to the, went to the Greeks, people that I've never met before. So the issue is, uh, the problem in the North is the Medigra and environs. Do we really see even key stakeholders taking it upon themselves that this is the problem we have? Do we identify uh, who uh, the members of this uh, sex and try to, try, to, try to engage them? Of course, up to 2007, I think the, state, the security apparatus 
really, really had a hang on who these people were, how they were organized, uh, possible cells, and the late Yusuf had been known to security services. Even people who they said that was possible sponsors were taken to court. Uh, over the years, one of the problems we have, we have had in Nigeria also is um, the documentation and cons consistency. So what happened between 2007 and now? Do they really follow up on all those, uh, all those leads comprehensively? Uh, we solve problems. Uh, because it's not comprehensive, then they come back to us again and we start to new. Pardon me, but why is that always the case? Why is that always the case? As a nation, lack of institutional memory. We are, let's not look at just government. Let, let's just look, not look at security. Uh, take channels, for instance. If you have had different heads of channel, uh, how old is channel, for instance? And if it maybe is 10 years, let's say it's 10 years, and in 10 years they've had five chief executives, this institution cannot function very well. I think, uh, as a nation, those are the things we uh, should take into consideration. So the frequency with which we change some heads uh, matters. Also, 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 also matters. Well, yes. I think this question is important in the sense that, you know, last time we had the Commissioner for Information in Borono State here, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, Boko Haram is, mm -hmm. a, is a name that was given by the media. Mm. Uh, the group doesn't call themselves Boko Haram. Mm. And even then, they still do not understand what the agitations of the group was, because we asked those questions. Mm. What exactly do they want? Mm. How can we negotiate with them if we know, and I was thinking that that's the only way we'll begin to negotiate when we know what people want and if they have a face. You negotiate with known people. And he says, well, they do not know the names, they do not know what exactly they are about. They are still appealing to them to come out and, you know, table what exactly it is that they want. So the the question that begs for an answer is, do we really understand this group, this general Boko Haram umbrella name that we've put on this group? And if uh, a commissioner of information from Borno Street came here and gave that perspective, that itself is a problem. And I'll tell you why it's a problem. Um, you, if, you, if you speak to people from that place, they will, they will tell you that. They've had evidence of this sect over the last 15 years. Young men dressed in white, preaching. And they've said before that the essence of uh, the sect is to propagate the teachings of Prophet Muhammad in, in the, best, the best way they think uh, uh, it should be propagated. <coughs> uh, Yusuf, the founder, was known to security services. They can't say he wasn't known to uh, the Borno State government. Uh, we've also been told about certain killings. Uh, people were people, somebody was a commissioner in Borno State who later was identified with the sex and was killed. And the issue is not people, well, uh, uh, the, it has its name, but 